Today I've got a very cute Christmas story. It is called Bear's First Christmas. It started to snow and a bear, very young, caught two or three flakes on the tip of his tongue. The coming of snow could mean only one thing. It meant the bear had to sleep until spring. Down a hill which was steep, past tall bluffs which were steeper, the bear trekked through the woods that grew deeper and deeper. He trekked on a path past a lake's sandy shore and at last found a cave with a rough stone for a floor. At the mouth of the cave, the bear noticed a tree, which struggled to grow where no tree ought to be. In the view the bear got from the mouth of the cave, the tree looked quite small, but also quite brave. As he rested his head on his furry soft paw, the brave little tree was the last thing he saw. And then his eyes closed and on the rough stone, he drifted to sleep all alone, all alone. The winter closed in and the days and days passed while the wind from the north blew its shivery blast. On the floor of the forest, the snow rose and rose and the lakes and the streams and the rivers all froze. The bear slept and he dreamed of the coming of spring and the showers of rain and the flowers she'd bring and the birds who'd return and who'd swoop through the skies. But a faraway sound made him open his eyes. The bear followed the sound, but it stayed very faint and was lost by and by in a crow's harsh complaint. The crow cawed and cawed, and his caw seemed to say he needed some help finding food right away. In all those deep woods, there was no one to hear except the young bear, and to him it was clear. He'd have to hike home and then search high and low for some sort of food for the shivering crow. Homeward he trudged with the snows to his knees and returned with some honey, a comb from the bees. The crow pecked his fill of that treat from the bear. Then he spread his black wings and he took to the air. He followed the bear while the moon hid its face and the stars twinkled cold in the vastness of space. They came to a bog where a moose with his teeth tried to scrape at some ice for the weeds underneath. He needed some help, which the bear could well see, so he scraped with his claws till the cold weeds were free. The moose ate and he ate. When he'd eaten his fill, he followed the bear and the crow round a hill. The wind whispered sharp and the night grew unpleasant. As the bear saw ahead, the crushed, crushed home of a pheasant. A branch overhead had let loose loads of snow that had smashed the bird's home with the force of a blow. The pheasant had chicks and the chicks' cries were pleas that said to the bear that they were scared they would freeze. A nod from the bear let the frightened birds know they should follow his tracks that he made through the snow, which they instantly did on the chance that they might, with his help, find a place to be safe through the night. On the bear trudged till he saw, through more snow, a lair or a burrow all lit by a glow. Icicles hung from its top, sharp and bright. Its side had a space that was open for light. And what's this from inside, that wonderful sound? After all of his trekking, its source had to be found. He crept to the light without making a noise. In the glow of the light were two girls and two boys. And peeling from them came a mysterious words, a sound to the bear like the music of birds. He stood and he stared and his eyes grew more wide for there was a wonderful glowing inside, a glow with warm rays like the sun at its rise, a glow cast from faces, a glow cast from eyes, but a glow most of all from the wonderful tree that the beasts out of doors were astonished to see. 
A tree dressed in lights, each shiny as dew. What the lights meant, though, no animal knew. The last of the sounds faded off in the night. The children inside were led slowly from sight. Out of doors the bees stared as the last embers fell. They thought and they thought, but they still couldn't tell what the meaning could be of this music, the lights, and the gladness inside on this darkest of nights. But a spark deep inside them gave off that same glow as they made their way back through the drifts of deep snow. The bear broke the trail and he made it so wide the moose, who was giving the birds all a ride, could quickly and easily follow along as the birds on his back sang an improvised song, which was only caw caw and merely tweet tweet, but was shared and by sharing grew more and more sweet. The bear showed it the pheasants his well-hidden den to say they could stay until spring came again, to which all the pheasants were quick to agree though they and the others all stared at the tree, at the crooked, the ragged, the struggling tree, at the tree that was growing where no tree should be. For the moon in the sky had set down a bright beam that touched the tree's branches and made them all gleam. Almost as if in the dark of the night, the tree had been graced by a magical light. There was room in the cave for the moose and the crow. They needn't trudge off through the dark and the snow. Into the cave, the bear squeezed with each guest, and they all settled down to begin their long rest. They slept and the tree shed its marvelous light all through the freezing and long winter night. It continued to glow when the winter was done and the earth had been touched by the warmth of the sun. And the bear in new treks knows the light never ends. It's a knowledge he shares with his wide roaming friends for each friend, though he roams from the others apart, carries with him, inside him, that glow in his heart. Wasn't that such a cute story? I'm so excited to share more stories with you. I will see you tomorrow.